one of the most contentious issues facing voters in November, abortion. The former president faced pressure from social conservatives to back a federal nationwide ban on abortion. But in a video released earlier today, he took a different stance. Take a listen. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Well, it's certainly not accurate to say that this is abortion is where everybody wants it from a legal standpoint, but certainly where uh, conservatives uh, wanted it, at least to begin. Let's discuss. Um, so, Kristen, uh, you cover Trump. There was mounting pressure on him from social conservatives uh, to, uh, to push a nationwide abortion ban. Um, he didn't say whether if something like that landed on his desk, he would sign it into law. He did say uh, that he was proud of the fact that the justices he appointed overturned Roe v. Wade. Was there actually anything new that he said today? No, and I will remind you that this is actually exactly where he started. I mean, publicly for the last two years, he has been saying it should be left up to the states. This is not an issue that he in any way wants to take on. And this was really him putting a button on it. This isn't going to change before the election unless something catastrophic happens. I'm told by advisors, like, this is the stance of the campaign and of Donald Trump. And the only reason that he came out and did this was because he was getting so much pressure from both sides to come up with a definitive stance. Now, he was getting this behind the scenes kind of pushback, as you said, from these evangelicals, from these social conservatives. And he was listening and he was publicly flirting with the idea of a 15 week national ban. But when you hear these moderate Republicans who were going to him, they were telling him this is a huge mistake politically. You cannot get out there and do any sort of national ban. So, yes, he did not mention it. But I am told by the campaign this was his way of putting his marker on where he's going to stand. And that's not going to change. Alice, um, his former vice president, Mike Pence, posted uh, on X on Twitter this response, quote, President Trump's retreat on the right to life is a slap in the face to the millions of pro-life Americans who voted for him in 2016 and 2020. And we saw a similar note of criticism from Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, who said, quote, I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is a state's rights issue. Dobbs, that's the uh, case in which Roe was overturned, Dobbs does not require that conclusion le legally. And the pro-life movement has always been about the well-being of the unborn child, not geography, meaning state by state. Uh, Trump took to Truth Social just moments ago to attack Lindsey Graham by saying, in part, Senator Lindsey Graham is doing a great disservice to the Republican Party and to our uh, country. Um, he, he basically is saying that that's a, a loser of an issue politically, so Republicans shouldn't be there. Well, do you think this is, any of this is going to have any impact on anti-abortion, pro-life voters? I don't think so. They are taking this as an opportunity to really express their frustration with this. You have groups like Susan B. Anthony who say keeping this in the hands of the state really cedes this to the Democratic will on abortion, which they think is late term abortion. You have groups like Concerned Women for America who say that they uh, support Donald Trump's position, but they would like to see a uh, talk about a, a national limits on abortions, not uh, bans. But we have to recognize the fact we're past the Republican primary. He's the presumptive nominee. We're in a general election. And Donald Trump needs to appeal to independent, more moderate voters. And politically speaking, he's not going to do so if their threat hangs out there of a federal ban. And you can be pro-life, you can be anti-abortion, but we must recognize the political reality. If he did not uh, put a pin in this and explain exactly what his position is, Democrats would be hanging over his head about a federal ban, which Mind you, couldn't happen because neither side would get 60 votes for a federal ban. But it was important politically for Donald Trump to put his flag in the ground on this issue. Uh, how do Democrats see it? Because I don't think it's like that. I, I don't think so either. I think that Democrats think this is a losing issue for Republicans. I think that time and time again in the midterms and in these conservative states where ballot initiatives have lost, this is not a winning issue for Republicans. Democrats are going to take full advantage, not only from a fundraising point of view, but also in the ballot box in November. They're, this is an opportunity for them to reach out to those moderate voters, those Nikki Haley voters that are so important for uh, Joe Biden to win in November. And I will say that's the one thing that Democrats and Donald Trump seem to agree with. <laughs> this is not a winning issue for Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I, I don't think he took it off the table for them in, in any case, because, I mean, obviously, their Democrats are still going to say he didn't say whether he would oh, sign absolutely. a ban. Uh, and he said that he's the one that's responsible for this. He, he began the video focusing on IVF, which is obviously an issue that has like 90 percent support uh, and making it clear he supports families making their own choices when it comes to that type of uh, family planning. Um, 
So I, I guess he is trying to walk a line, but it, it really is just not where these swing voters are. No, it's not. And I think, again, Donald Trump knows that this is a losing issue. And if it was up to him, he probably wouldn't be talking about this at all.